Mike McGavick, uh, Chairman of the Geneva Association and uh, Chief Executive of Excel Capital Group. Thank you um, for coming here today. You bet. First, I wanted to ask you, what do you think people should really take away from the meetings uh, here with the Geneva Association? I think, I think more than anything, this particular progress meeting is so important because it matches to such a critical time in the history of the industry. I mean, right now, basically, Almost all of the fundamental rules of how insurance has been regulated heretofore have been brought into question and are being rethought. And to have so many key regulators, so many key insurance leaders in one place to talk about that in open forum is incredibly important because over these next 18 months to two years, I think it's true that most of the rules as we have known them will change. How applicable are the rules uh, for designated globally systemic banks uh, for the insurance industry? Yeah, not very much at all would be the short answer. Look, you know, banks have simply, the, the banking model, the banking um, business model has very different characteristics. You know, when you're transforming duration, which is the fundamental thing they do, right? You really have significant risks that have to be managed in a real-time way. For insurers, the way that insurance capital works and the way claims are made on insurance capital, it's a much slower, more drawn-out process. The business model has risks, but they're very different risks. You can't solve one group's problems with the same solution for the other group. They just won't work. They aren't suited to the business model. So it's wonderful that we have so much attention to the banks, but let's be sure that as we take that energy forward, we design something specific to the insurance business model. And let's focus on a simple question. What is the problem we're trying to solve? There are problems, but what is the problem we're trying to solve? And what's a narrow tool to try and address that problem so that we don't have unintended consequences, so that we don't make a healthy industry somehow even more risky? Do you see any carryover from the US process across into the global process? And how do you think, what do you think the implications of that would be if there are? Well, you know, again, if, if this is such an incredible moment of change, and therefore a time to really pay attention to where these regulators are going. You can't help but notice that we have different activities, um, certainly on both sides of the Atlantic, but really all around the world. There isn't coordinated global regulation of insurance today. There is somewhat regionally consistent regulation. And we're going to have to see some harmonization of that over time. That part, I think, is absolutely true. The devil's in the details on how to get there. Which system are we going to rely on more or less? How are they going to be able to verify across geographies that for internationally active groups there's consistency of some kind? And how are we going to learn to trust that different ways of regulating can be equally effective? That this is a huge, huge challenge. And I look at it in the simplest terms, as you say. We're in this process where we've designated G size uh, out of uh, Brussels, and at the same time, uh, out of the US, we've designated G SIFIs. And each of those will be regulated by different organizations. Um, how we create some kind of harmony is going to be a crucial task. And it's not clear to me how that's going to get done, because there's no requirement that they coordinate. Hopefully, they'll just be the logic that they should. Mike, you spoke very eloquently today about four key points uh, that you'd want people to take away from uh, uh, the discussions that we've had on regulation. Can you just talk us quickly through those? Points? Yeah, I do, I do think it's important to remember some things. So, so I, I think we should start with the observation that the insurance and reinsurance sector are performing very well. And for the most part, almost overwhelmingly, performed well during the financial crisis. It actually helped slow it down. So the first principle to me is do no harm. You have a working, thriving sector. Let's not undermine it somehow by how we apply the lessons from the past. Second, let's collaborate. You know, I know there are some who believe that the regulator should never talk to the regulatee because they're afraid that they'll somehow get captured or corrupted by the views of those they regulate. But in the end, if we're going to come how quickly, come to a new set of regulatory principles, we're going to have to work together or there will be unintended consequences. And I'm pretty sure they won't be helpful. So we're going to have to work together, regulator and the regulated, 
to get along, get some ideas on the table, and try to really work um, to try and come to common answers. So that collaboration is very important. That's the second idea. The third idea that I also think is important, let's experiment along the way. Let, let's try to be iterative about how this develops. So for example, you know, we have regulatory colleges for the first time across the globe. We're learning from those experiences. I would be using those opportunities to learn what do we need to hold in common in terms of capital standards? What do we need in terms of access to each other's work to make sure that something doesn't fall through the cracks or is not recognized? I think practical on the ground regulators working in colleges could actually be the hotbed of innovation for how these regulators work together across the globe on internationally active insurers. And then, and then finally, I think we need to realize we need to take baby steps. If we're going to do those first three things, this needs to evolve over time. We can't try and think we can somehow imagine it out of thin air a complete global regulatory and capital standards system, to try and imagine that and put it in place so quickly out of thin air, that doesn't seem to me to be very wise. We'd better off to learn from nature. This has to evolve in a more organic way. Then we're going to get to the right answers.